I am Rabbi Ale Abruch. Uh, I was born here in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And uh, well, I am running this uh, wonderful and humble congregation here in Buenos Aires, in Belgrano neighborhood. And uh, well, it's a very interesting uh, congregation. The Argentinian community is uh, it's a very strange and interesting uh, community. And well, we are uh, we are running a very uh, not an order order ordinary. Uh, uh, organization, institution. We are, we call Judaica Net, and we are a net of organizations. Let's say we have around four synagogues and two uh, schools. One uh, one school is uh, for all the for uh, primary and uh, for kindergarten and primary, another kindergarten, another kind of organization institutions that uh, work with uh, disabled people kids with special needs, uh, trying to get a job uh, to, to those kind of, of, per, of, of people. We have a very important social action programs and an institution specifically for social action. We work, uh, not only here, we have a soup kitchen in, the, in, the, in this synagogue and optics and pharmacy, uh, but we have a, a lot of work with the with Caritas, there is the, um, the social action uh, program of the church, of the Catholic Church here in Argentina. So we have a lot of work in uh, interreligious uh, dialogue and work in, uh, in, in several shanty towns, working in, uh, in, in several uh, soup kitchens there. And well, it's a, it's a privilege. And it's uh, and at the same time it's uh, it's uh, I don't know how to say in English, but uh, it's it, it, it's a, it's a hard work and it's a wonderful work. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Well, I be, uh, I began involving the Jewish community and religious life uh, since very young. My my parents are not religious. I was born in a, in a let's say regular Jewish traditional house, but with with not a, not an observing uh, family. But I began to study, and I loved uh, I love music, so I began with a, with a, with music through Judaism. So uh, we have now a, a very musical. A way of understanding tefillah and, and spirituality here in the synagogue too. But yes, I, I'm here as a rabbi since the last 11 years. Mm. But I am involved uh, running as a as a religious leader uh, as long as 22 or 23 years ago. How Argentina influences my Judaism? Yeah. Well, interesting. I think that, um, and you can see this kind of of, uh, of pluralism, of, of uh, diverse way of Jewish life since the time of the tribes in the desert, and then with the two. Uh, uh, Different, uh, uh, different states, let's say, of Israel and, and at the time of, of the kings, right, in the north and in the south, and then in Babylonia and Jerusalem, and then Ashkenazim and Sephardim, and then uh, the, the place, every, every time the, a Jew sits on a place, uh, he took a lot of things of his, of his uh, environment, and uh, he, he makes it kosher. So uh, I, I understand that sometimes people want to divide the movements. If you are conservative or if you are reform, or if you are orthodox, and I think that uh, those are different 
it's, it's okay, different uh, ideologies of how to understand Halakha and the Jewish way of life, but they were born in another places of the world, not here in Argentina. Mm -hmm. So I think, I feel that we have uh, our own Jewish uh, liberal and South American way of life. I don't know if there is conservative or reform or constructionist, I don't know. But uh, I know that here in Argentina we, we have our, our own way of understanding spirituality and community and traditions. Uh, well, we, we began specifically in 2001, 2002, mm -hmm. when the crisis uh, destroyed Argentina and the Jewish community too. Here, the third part of the Jewish community was below the the line of poverty in 2002. It was very, very hard. And uh, well, I, I, I was uh, by the by the joint distribution committee. Uh, I was appointed to run uh, the programs for the for the non-Jewish society. So there were a, um, a budget to work on on programs, uh, not only for the Jewish community but outside the community. And there we began with uh, very strong links with uh, with uh, the, the, the Catholic uh, social action programs. They work at the shanty towns since a very long time ago. They are not Jewish population in shanty towns, but uh, we were there, a very very poor uh, place in the city. Uh, well, you you were there with me, yeah. and uh, it's a very hard place in the city, and it was fantastic because. Uh, we run uh, different programs. At this time, we were at 35 soup kitchens in different shanty towns in Buenos Aires. 35 soup kitchens, and we ran a program where we not not only gave them food and money to sustain them, uh, but we run a very interesting program where uh, uh, a lot of of young kids uh, came to Ort the. Most, one of the most important uh, education institutions here in the Jewish uh, uh, educational net. And they, they came to her to have the classes of computing and it was a, a fantastic work at, at this time. That, well, until now we have very nice links, not, not only about, the, the, about the, 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 the food or the work, but for example, since the last 10 years, we were working there every um, every Neila when Yom Kippur is ending uh, a lot of people of those shanty towns Christian of, of course they come with us to the service to end Yom Kippur together it's, an, it's so nice they, they rent a, a, a very a very big uh, uh, bus and they come to our to our service at Neila they come first of all <laughs> wow. And they stay with us at the end, at the end of Yom Kippur. They, and it's it's so nice. Every every year they come. Makes me think of the shanty town. How you were saying that there are people who became doctors, and yet they still work in the yeah, shanty. Yes, so they towns. come back to the shanty town. Yes. Okay. It, it seems like um, to feed them is important. But also, you know, will these shanty towns be there forever, 20, 30 years later, if, if they just propagate, continue to be this way? You know, it's very hard. We are in Parashat Re'e. In, in an hour there will be Shabbat, and Parashat Re'e says that poverty will be always on the earth. So I, I really hate this this verse. I, I don't like it. But uh, that's what to say in Parasha. But in the same Parasha said that you have to open your hand. You have to do it. it it's not it's, it's not a question that maybe we, we, we will never fix the world. You have to do it. That's the point. The, 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 the point is to know that when you say 
Will we fix all the world? You will stay in your house if you want to, to, to ask this question. But if you decide that the world, the world world is your world, is the guy behind you, so you can fix it, your world. So I am in contact with a little sub-kitchen in this shanty town. I don't know if I will fix all the shanty town and all the poverty of the world, but I will fix the problems of these guys. Maybe some, some another person will fix it, uh, another part of the world, his world. This is the only way to fix it. A lot of people that were in our group and I felt that what's, um, what's the point? These people are so poor um, and they're always going to stay there, but like from my perspective, they, I don't came, know they came here because they probably were even poorer before. Yes. For them, this, this is a step up. Yes. And at some point, you know, people who, like Jews, lived in shanty towns before. Yes. And, some, and before that, you know, they I were beggars. I don't know. How right? can you say they will ever be like... You don't know. No. You really don't know. I, those guys that come back to be doctors, they can be doctors here too. They want it but because they know that they can help this part. They didn't forget. It's very interesting. Uh, you never know. You, you will make a little mitzvah to some person and you will never know what it will do to this person 20 years later. You don't know. So let's do it. You know.